الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, welcome back to your favorite show Inshallah, Real Talks with your brother Da'waman A.K.A. myself, alongside your brother Strides Always trying to take Strides to Jannah Inshallah Inshallah so um, as you guys know, this show is for the non-practicing brothers and sisters, okay? If you don't have no other Islamic education in your life and you don't do nothing Islamic, at least you can watch the show where you learn about your religion. You're going to find these are topics that are going to be based and focused around a lot of you guys, okay? If you missed out on the previous videos and the previous uh, episodes you put out, go to the playlist section of this channel, whether you're watching it on my channel or his channel, and go click on the playlist called Real Talk and then catch up on the videos. So inshallah ta'ala I'm going to set a timer because our discussion from this point onwards is not going to be more than 12 minutes Ak. So question Ak. Today we're going to talk about abortion. Sadly this is becoming a common thing. Ak. We've got a lot of Muslim girls okay, that are getting abortions done. They're having you know, intercourse by next man outside of marriage. Obviously now they're not married. They know family's going to go on a mad one. She's going to go have a youth. So she goes and has an abortion. What are you saying to me, Ak? Alright, so first year we got a tackle it. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Okay, so first we got a tackle it from the first point of view, which is that the sister uh, went out and she committed zina. Yeah. She had sexual intercourse. Fornication. She done fornication with a brother, a boy, um, and she got pregnant. And now she's in a situation because of this zina that she committed that her parents are gonna wild out on her they're gonna go crazy because first and foremost you know she had unlawful sex yeah and now she has a baby coming on the way so she's scared and that's why she's gonna go abort the baby so first and foremost we understand that islam is a religion of prevention mm. islam came to prevent these sort of things happening so obviously the sister, you know, she didn't lower her, lower her gaze when it came to looking at the boy. You know, she had some sort of inclination towards the boy. She free mixed. She fell into these small little sins that led to, I wouldn't say small little sins, but she fell into these. But it's small compared to the fornication. Yeah, itself. exactly. Compared to that, she fell into that, l leading up to the bigger situation that she's in now. So first and foremost, we need to advise those who, you know, are in these small little scenarios that could lead up to this big scenario and tell them to stay away from this sort of stuff because it's going to lead to such acts like this. And this is exactly why Allah made free mixing impermissible. Yeah. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made males and females not being able to talk to one another for this no legitimate why, exactly. reason. Because like, why Allah told you to lower your gaze. Exactly. Why Allah told you to cover properly. Exactly. All of these were a prevention so it wouldn't come to you. This situation that you're in now where you have a baby on the way and you know you're scared and whatnot. Yeah, it's true because like a lot of people come to me and they say to me, Ak are uh, you know, I've got a girl pregnant. I'm like, okay. Like, I need help. Mm. I was like, what, what, what help? What do you, you, you want me to do that? What, what can I do for you? I, I need help. I, there's no help. It's fine. It's, what, 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 what do you want me to do? You, you, can't, you can't abort the baby. That's, that's murder. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. We're going to talk about it in a second, but an abortion is murder. That's going to be, that's going to be worse than the zina now. But I'm saying, act now. This this is why the religion people don't get. It's trying to close the door for the harm, to, from the harm happening in the first place. Exactly. Some people come to me. They tell me I'm possessed. I'm like, okay. I'm well. Help. How? Before you got possessed, I could have helped you because what are the reasons people get possessed? Right? They get possessed because they don't pray their salah. Like they listen to music is a reason that people get possessed. You get drug, do drugs and alcohol is a reason people get possessed. Watching pornography is a reason that people get possessed. Engage in haram money, engage in riba, interest-based loans and whatnot, mortgages. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why people get possessed. So I'm saying, if you listened to me last week, when I was talking about these issues, yeah, you, yeah. I could have helped you, but now you've done it. I can't. Sure, I can read Quran on you. We can, we can do ruqya. We can try to do exorcism. Inshallah, slowly, slowly, it will get better. Mm -hmm. Maybe Allah might make it get better quickly. But reality is, it's gonna be a now. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a hard journey for you now. Now you're possessed. You got magic. Like, it might take years mm. for this treatment to take place. Sometimes it might never ever get better. 
You know what I'm saying? You, it's like a disease you've got to live with, like diabetes you've got to live with. You just got to, you, you, now you're going to have to, before you didn't have to be so strict. Now your situation is so deep that you have to pray tahajjud every night. Every night you've got to pray tahajjud. You've got to be praying in the masjid to protect yourself. Your, your worship has to be higher because you're possessed now. That's mm-hmm. the only way to combat the magic with the permission of Allah. So I'm saying, you guys have to understand prevention is better than cure. When the religion tells you, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, when the religion tells you, sister, don't dress in that way. Sister, cover up, sister. Sister, don't go to the club, sister. Sister, don't have male friends. And then you're coming out and also saying, oh, the religion's too hard. Yeah. No, so the religion is what's trying to make things easy for I- you. Exactly. You're making it hard. But this is what Imam Ibn Qayyim says something powerful. He said, is it harder to be patient to not look at the girl? Or is it harder to be patient what happened as a result of looking at the girl? Exactly. Meaning, okay, it's true. She's a pain tick, so you want to look at her. <laughs> but it's hard. you got to look down. Ugh. But is it harder to prevent yourself from looking at her? Or is it harder to now have to raise this baby that's going to come out of her? And have to go against your whole family? And her to go with her family? And we had sex, basically. That's, 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 that's what happened. It's peak, you see what I'm saying? But uh, look, with that said, yeah, let's talk about the actual abortion issue. Because that's, that's another crime in and within itself. Mm-hmm. You know, if a, per- if a person comes and they, uh, and they have an abortion, They've now done murder. And murder is one step worse than fornication. Fornication, yeah. Allah said, إِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ SubhanAllah. That little, 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 you know, human that you killed. Whether it be a baby that's born, because some people used to kill their babies. Mm. Or that little human that you killed. On the day of judgment, it's going to be brought out. It's going to be asked, for which reason were you murdered? And the one who murdered this child, or this baby, or whatever it is, is going to be punished severely for that. Murder is the greatest sin after shirk. The worst sin is shirk, and we discussed that in the last video. Mm. Then the next sin is murder, then the next sin is fornication. So you did the third worst sin already. Yeah, and now you're going to go and do now the second. Now you're going to do the second greatest sin, which is murder. SubhanAllah. And you know what's amazing is that Allah already told you, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا He said, don't go anywhere near to zina. Don't go anywhere near to fornication. So what means going near to it is what? Don't look at her. Don't talk to her. Don't dress like that, my sister. Because that's what, by you dressing in an appealing way, not covered is inviting man to you. Exactly. But a man to go to is him actually going to you. So all of that, Allah said, don't go anywhere near. Anything that could be near to Zina, don't go near it. Then Allah said, فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاهِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا But he said, if you, if you do go to the Zina, then what you have to understand is that the Zina, the fornication, is a filthy act that leads to an even more filthy path. And that's proof because people fornicate, what do they do? They want to go and abort. Then they go murder. murder. So you fornicated. So you had, to, you had to do all these other sins that were leading up to the fornication. Then you fornicated. And then Allah said, it doesn't stop there. Fornication leads to even worse. Now murder. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, and, you, and, these, and these girls, act, you're, you're going to murder. Uh, do, you, do you know what the punishment of murder is, my sisters? My sister, pay attention. Do you know the punishment of murder? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says مَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَعَنَهُ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابًا عَظِيمًا There is no other sin in the Quran that Allah described in such a severe way like this. Allah mentioned five punishments for the one who murders. Wow. The one who murders a believer, five punishments. What's the first punishment? فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمَ You're going to go to hell. Then Allah said, Khalidan fiha, you're gonna stay in hell forever. Wow. Wa Allahu alayhi. Allah's anger is upon you. The third thing. Allah uh, Allah's curse is upon you. Allah's curse means there's no mercy. Wow. You're, you're gonna have a punishment with no mercy. And the last thing is, Wa a mighty punishment is prepared for you. So as if to say all well, that wasn't already a punishment. Allah says, on top of that, after he mentioned, and a mighty punishment is prepared to you. So what's the five? Hellfire. For eternity. Allah's anger. His curse is on you. And you will stay, and a mighty punishment is prepared for you. That is all for what you murder in this, 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 this. And child. that's because you fell into zina. And that's because you didn't lower your gaze and you didn't dress properly. And you didn't do those things that you were saying. You didn't think it was too much. Just because you didn't do that, now look where it's led to. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, I don't understand that person. And that's why Islam is such a beautiful religion. Wallahi, Islam's trying to prevent you from falling into that. Islam is trying to make your life easy. 
<sighs> and you're just making your life hard as generally like literally hell like literally that's what like what you're trying to do yeah, to yourself Allah said Allah intends to make things easy for you Allah yeah. doesn't want to make it hard exactly. what's hard is now dealing with that baby like another sister messaged me she's saying I got herpes I got STD so she wants to get married now and she's like I have to tell my future husband I've got AIDS who the hell is going to want to marry me because you can't have kids if you're going to wear a condom mm. So she's like, who's going to marry me? Like, who wants to be with someone who's got STDs? And it's like 80% of people got some kind of an STD now. It could even pass on through kissing, not even have to be through intimacy. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm saying like, my sisters, my brothers, Allah wants to make it easy for you. Now you have to deal with that. Mm. Now think about it, some sisters, you know, you, you, maybe you don't even get pregnant, but you get heartbroken by the guy. Like when a girl loses her virginity to a guy, when a girl has sexual intercourse with a guy, she connects with him in a way that the guy doesn't connect with a girl. For her intimacy is more, a lot more of a deeper connection. So I'm saying now, sister, he left you, he broke your heart. Is it harder now to have to do with a heartbreak? Or is it harder to do with not even talking to him in the first place? You see, it's always harder when you don't listen to Allah. It's mm. always easier if you listen to Allah. Exactly. So, and you know there's another issue, but I don't want to go into it now, but you know that child, not only can you not kill the child, but that father doesn't even have the right to be the father of that child. Yeah. That child has to wear hijab in front of that dad. That dad cannot be alone with that girl. Because the only way you can be given the right of being a dad is if it happened through nikah. But the, we'll link them to the video that I did. I did another video on this issue. Go to the video link below about, about what happens with regards to the child that's born and the relationship that child has with a dad. That child has no relationship with the dad. Wow, that child has no relationship with the dad. Dad, yeah. out of his, you know, he's a biological dad, but he's not a sh he's Islamically shari. He's not a dad. Mm. But you know, I was gonna mention on just a last note, yeah. Okay, so say for example, their sisters watching now, who are in that situation, have messed up, have you know, now this big situation at their hand. What advice? You know, would you give to them what advice? So, the, you know the video that I just mentioned? Yeah. Uh, in more detail, I explain it there. You, you have that I explain it in more there, detail. Yeah. But what I would say to my sisters is this. That Allah made this calamity happen to you. This is a reminder. No matter how bad it seems right now. And it's bad. It is bad. I'll give you that. Mm. You're going to be born. You can't, you're going to have to give birth to a you. That, you know, even the biological dad is not going to be the real dad. Everyone's going to know. It's going to be peak. Like it's going to be peak. Your life is going to change now. If you kill it, it's going to be even worse. So I'm saying your situation is bad right now. But all of this Allah is making you see it. Why? So you realize if you don't change now, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. If anything, you like Allah is trying to show you you're on a path. Where if you carry on like this, it's going to be worse in this life and in the next life. On a day of judgment, you're going, you, might, you might end up getting roasted and toasted in the fire. May Allah protect you, um, my brothers and my sisters. Because I don't want it to sound like I'm just talking to my sisters. You, you guys are a party to this as well. All of you. So I'm saying, the fact that Allah made this calamity happen to you is to send you a reminder that you're on a path to destruction. That if you don't change now and you carry on, it will be even worse. So if anything, this actually is a gift from Allah. To wake you up So my sisters make change Now You know really and truly You guys need to learn your religion I really would advise you, you know, We have an online program For people who are non-practicing mm -hmm. To learn their religion It's called a Muslim survival guide Go to the link below Inshallah to Allah, Muslim survival guide.com Go to the link below Inshallah to Sign up Start studying your religion That's where real change comes about You see what I'm saying But now it's just You have to change You have to leave behind Your bad friends Cut off his boyfriend Just change whether you're pregnant or not, some of you might not even be pregnant. But then it's like, you're still doing it. You're still doing it. Now, yeah. I remember one sister t was telling me, you know, she left this guy because she wanted to fear Allah, but she got back with him and she, she just wouldn't listen. She would keep going back to this guy, keep having sex. She ended up getting pregnant. SubhanAllah. So I'm saying, and now she's like, oh, I wish I just listened the first time. SubhanAllah, man. Yeah. So I think, you know, we'll end that discussion there. Uh, at hand, it is quite a lengthy discussion to have, but, you know, we want to make this show quite short simple to the point so inshallah brothers and sisters don't forget to check out the playlist we have many videos on there walhamdulillah and yeah until the next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh but listen wait wait i know that was a bit of a peak video i don't want you guys to feel too bad i forgot to mention something in it what even though you did an outrageous sin 
Allah can forgive you in it. Allah will, yeah, exactly. And uh, if you want to know about how deep that forgiveness is, I think they have to tune into the next lesson next week, and inshallah, the next yeah, video. Allah. In the next video, we'll talk about Allah's forgiveness and how He can forgive you for this. Most certainly, most certainly. But you still can't have an abortion. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>